Thank you for your patience and I apologize for this delay. So I pretty much feel like a world star, like, yeah, hey, so this, you know, like people on the, at the concert wait for the famous one. So for the long, okay, I'm considered famous, woohoo. <laughs> so hi, 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 hi. All right, so welcome to the mobile testing survival knowledge part one. Um, we plan 10 sessions, so each one hour, maybe a little bit uh, longer. We'll see how's it going. So I have a previous experience. It's actually it was going very well, and people like it, love it, love it, the subject. So let's start. Um, so what we will do today? I mean, if I ask you about mobile, mobile testing, I mean, okay, if I ask you about mobile, then more likely you will tell me something like that. Black and white, a lot of special names, whatever, but nobody know what is this about. So when we talk about mobile testing, I think it will go worse. But uh, more likely today, all what you know about uh, mobile testing, it will be some black and white mesh net something. So. Um, what we do is, actually I call this class, so in class, as a boot camp. So because um, it's very intense, it's completely different and um, challenge from your previous knowledge, what you know. Uh, so in, um, today it actually will be like kind of introduction and we talk about mobile ecosystem. So because uh, if you don't know anything about ecosystem, then it's very hard to make some conceptual vision, create some conceptual understanding so about test planning in mo mobile world. And believe it or not, it will be part of your responsibility because the company is a small, fast-passing environment. Uh, and uh, sometimes like people say, man, what I'm doing every day? So this is the best question in interview. So what, what is your, was your daily responsibility? So tell me about yourself. Tell me about your last project and things like that. So and normally, <laughs> so this when you start, uh, you always start to uh, answer this question uh, with a simple explanation like, hey, depends on the project stage or project uh, so pr progress, so I can tell you. So, but in the beginning, so f what we do, what we do as QA when uh, product is just start to develop, so we finally get the funds, so developers start to work like a crazy for, under, so this cre create a core function. So what we do at this point, exactly, we're planning. And believe it or not, so when the smaller the team, then more responsibilities you get in this planning. So it's why we need to cover all this mobile, mobile system today. So, but what else we will do? Um, we will have a fun to, to how to well you know your devices. So, and um, I will have like a lot of special, you know, this, my, I think my goal is here, this, you know, break your thinking about mobile world just like a small phones world, uh, Android and iPhone something, or tablets, so, or iPads. Uh, you know, just bright your horizon and tell you about new technology that coming in the next year hits finally our American island. So this we will talk about specific of mobile testing and it's a lot of uh, different things and people have like, okay, so what you can talk about? It's like, whoa, man, I don't know, then this and, and this and this exists. So we will have fun with that. So um, people struggle most of the time how to create uh, testing uh, mobile testing test case cases and bug report. So it's again, it's a completely okay. I'm lying. So not completely different, but uh, really some something special is there. Not just test and flavor, but so we have some special agenda. We have some specific testing testing for mobile devices or so like network stack protocol testing. So and we will cover that. Um, I it's experimental. So for the last four session. So it will be completely straight practicum. So we will just, uh, I will give you some application and one of this like prerequisition for the class, I hope that you guys all have somehow so mobile devices because it makes no sense if you don't have any mobile devices then man, why are you in a class? I mean, so I'm sorry I cannot provide you mobile, I mean, I will do. So this, uh, we will uh, do some simulation on uh, Blackberry phones and I have some, uh, believe it or not, some very primitive uh, simulator for iPhone, for Windows and Mac. So uh, we will try our best and I have like much more agenda going on and we'll see how much we can cover in this first experimental class. So and uh, actually, believe it or not, uh, we also will have final exam. And I know at the end of the class, you will ask me for final exam. It's a challenge happened so somewhere in the session number five. So people are tuned in one day like grown ups. Like wow, really? Okay, I'm ready. So I'm ready for challenge. So okay, enough with introduction. I hope this uh, somehow I convict you. If not, then we will see. So yeah, just a couple more words. So. Um, 
you will have this presentation naturally it will be in form of webinar and you will have this uh, slides so maybe in a couple hours after we're done so please read carefully expectation and responsibilities you know this I uh, normally I, I don't do introduction about myself so okay I'm not professor I'm not academic I just wo work with some mobile devices every day of my life so I'm really passionate so activist uh, futurist blah 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 so this I'm completely in love with augmented reality and variable computing so this I have a lot of friends uh, you know, from <laughs> Google, Meta, Epson, so uh, Daiquiri, and we will talk about this. And uh, actually, not just talk. I will try to do my best so to bring technology on board. So then we will not use Notepad, but you know, just to, to get some more interactive. So and I will try to communicate with you all the time. So and I will try to show you presentation of how the augmented reality application work. And we will talk about perceptual computing and a lot of other different things. Then maybe it will be some special breakthrough for you. It's like, blew your mind, blew your mind. OK, so let's start with uh, kind of fundamental boring stuff. But if we don't understand that, then uh, more likely we will sink. All right, so um, here we go. <sighs> Mobile ecosystem, it's actually, you know, this you see on the slide, it's a bunch of layers. So in uh, each layer represents some kind of industry or whatever, some agenda. So then we cannot escape uh, during our testing or during our planning So for testing. Uh, and all together, it's create some, uh, not just ecosystem, but, you know, it's help us to boost uh, and understand approach of testing, so agenda of testing, so what exactly uh, we put in the testing, like um, resources, um, I don't know, this money, time-wise. So, and uh, be flexible, you know, sometimes like, uh, my goodness, how many times I hear this uh, talk, like, oh my goodness, my manager is so dumb, he don't know what he's doing, or this um, developer is so crazy so they don't know what they're doing actually you know we're at the end of the chain it's why we really cannot uh, judge so you know this uh, really so what we doing so because uh, you know we're like at the end somewhere on the bottom uh, underground somewhere so because uh, manager have much more information about project at full so what's going on how's going on and sometimes uh, okay um, it's a, like secret information guys so <laughs> Um, you know, it's not, we read textbooks, we, we look for internet, so this uh, search and things, but uh, we also have daily life, and daily life sometimes is not how it's written, or, you know, it's, they always try to make some, put some special polish, so special shine, so how in perfection it should be, so, or we create some special statistical number, which, like, you know, we, we, tr we want to see, so, but, I will try to be the most honest with you, so I don't have too much experience with that. So uh, I am on QA, so this in, with mobile for the last three years. So I work in three different companies, and each company has some special, special. So, but I try to be just honest with you, so and reveal the secret. Then, so I experience every day. Okay. Oops. All right. What was that? So. Uh, what is the link for syllabus again? You know what? Uh, they he not create yet. So, but uh, right after we done so this um, our presentation, so that uh, I think he will give you link. So normally, maybe it will be just um, I I really don't know. I'm like ah, oh. so yeah. <laughs> I don't know answer for this one. Yeah, Mikhail does had one, and he will provide you at the end of the session. So he will be our so. Uh, gatekeeper so to information okay so let's talk about operator carrier and providers hey name is different but the meaning is the same so we all know who is uh, these people are so we hate them but we need them so because they basic uh, fundamental role so there was a guy in the beginning who uh, create all this uh, antenna so this uh, towers you know this uh, put this internet just together and keep this uh, all network and internet work together. So, and um, they also provide services then available for us, uh, we want it or not. So, and uh, so far, you know, they maintain relationship between all this uh, makers industry, so, and us as a subscriber. So, why we should consider and think about operator carriers when we start testing? So because depends on the area. Uh, think about, I mean, all right, if we in uh, some urban 
area like uh, Silicon Valley in the United States, fine. So we will not consider anything else than uh, for LTE, maybe VMAX. But so good to see if you're somewhere in Minnesota or it's some area at Michigan where still DSL is the most popular. So uh, you know this. <laughs> The network that exists, uh, they still use an analog, so 1G, uh, 2G, so, or 3G, it's like, wow, high technology. So then, okay, um, then at this point, you know, um, so we really will consider, so for who is our target uh, customer, so what providers they use, then what uh, phones we should really consider for testing and providers so should consider for testing. Okay. So the next point is um, we move up, it will be network. Network is a huge uh, objective to talk. We can spend just one hour for that, so but we don't have time today. It's more likely just conceptual things. So what is the role of network in mobile testing? So first of all, this, you know, infrastructure of network, so it's really important in our so test plotting. Because if we also start to think outside the box, we will not think just about the United States. But so, what does it matter if I will make some super cool app, super cool product, and I know then it's a very very necessary and super cool for people somewhere in Africa? But boom, infrastructure is not there, so they not develop f uh, something 4G technology yet, and most of the time, so got this feel this uh, you know this you create this product then you don't have your customer, you don't meet your target. So it's why this uh, in a testing planning stage you already think this what infrastructure you will use for your product. What you can do and how you can present it. So naturally this is the second point uh, for a network is ability to save and transfer information. Um, super cool for every end user and we know in experience this everyday speed of uh, the connection. So type of the connection is very important to, and when we go to specific of mobile testing so this is connectivity testing and you cannot es escape it doesn't matter what domain of mobile testing we will use so this uh, connectivity it's a one of the major things okay I if I ask you right now so what kind of mobile testing you possibly if you tomorrow have interview and they ask say hey what kind of mobile testing you perform so what will be your answer and when I ask, it's not a rhetorical question, you guys can write for me. So this I always try to replay for you. Because I understand I don't see your faces, you don't see my, but at least we somehow can interact. So and it will be more fun. So I just will wait for your replay, so, but uh, we'll continue. So one of the big part of uh, mobile uh, testing is the mobile stack testing protocol, where we use network simulator mainly, so, but we still also can have some part of uh, easy uh, going so this um, is helping tools and help, helping apps then I will uh, give you a clue in golden words so a way in how you can search for it so then you can bring this uh, to your employee so and get some <laughs> job offer in five minutes of interview no it's a real story really this two weeks ago so I have 60 years old so guy he was like completely a little bit um, um, insecure and really you know, shaky so then you know he will never get a job he's too old da, 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 you know all this issue so and done um, so I prepare him for interview for two and a half hours we was just talking and he was making notes so I give him some couple tips like okay how you can present uh, yourself and how you can present uh, so the they product from new perspective from professional perspective so he called me two days later he was like completely woohoo it's like you cannot believe so five minutes interview I just show them logs and I print so thanks your free apps on my mo mobile device and I got a job so 80,000 a year so come on it's good <laughs> it's good deal I was very proud of myself so um, we also okay come back to network things uh, performance load stress testing it's what we really so this uh, looking for network and for connectivity issue so uh, when we go to fun stuff like you know this uh, LBS so location based services or API testing oh my goodness if you don't have network so your history I mean it's more uh, related to gray box testing but I will try to cover it and finally explain what is API is it's like a mystery nobody really know what it is so um, is the one was testing spoon on interview oh my goodness hey we can you know what it's actually a very sensitive uh, subject I really like to test ocean spoons and box or whatever table but 
every time I start it, so I will, I will have really big trouble with Michael. So this, I have my way to teach you this how to test everything, and you know, because again, based on mobile uh, in mobile industry, then it's a little bit different world. So so far with Michael, you learn then uh, any testing possible. So it's pretty much you look uh, as a system. So all right, just use your logic. I hope it's clicking. So you think this about agile, so this is a very fast passing environment, so it's uh, mobile. You create a product, you don't have one year, you will be never compatible on market. So m maybe with uh, all this um, phase one, so just to get your product really marketable and uh, so then you can sell and get some first money to develop more and some better version of it. So you have, what, two, four months? it's the most. So in two, four months you need to develop product. When you start, you more likely what you have, backlogs, backlogs is just list of the feature, so what customer possibly want to see in a product or something like that. So and uh, maybe you have some business requirement or some business declaration doc uh, document, but really it's like one, two pages, it's not really large. So it was all everything is done for marketing and sell just to get the funding so then we can start do something. So initially, boom, then you don't have any documentation, you have minimum requirements, but <laughs> you still need to do it. So how you will do it? It's how we will learn this in the next three, four weeks. So uh, computability browsing testing, it's also this related to network. I'm just jumping, so but I need to keep on the subject it's because otherwise we will not cover this in one hour. Um, the seller technology. You just need to understand. So then it doesn't matter, you know, this how many definition and scientific and some special words they put in. So it's no more just a radio wave. So in, you know, this, um, it is just how this, this radio waves go from, uh, and signal of these waves go from one antenna to the other, or maybe go through the some, um, accelerometer or whatever, so, uh, sorry, um, accelerator so, or aggregator so to get this uh, signal stronger. So, but type of radio waves and antennas determine the capability of networks um, and how it uh, differentiate in services. So, I, I know this, I mean, GSM and CDMA, I think this, uh, everybody heard this word at least, so in, uh, you know, it's still globally wise, uh, it's still <laughs> most common technology. So again, so we already talked about this, then um, 4G, it's just start uh, more likely in United States, it's not covered United States fully. So in, um, we have this very well developed in Europe, so maybe in Japan and um, somewhere in Asia. So actually China is very good and South Korea is excellent. So but Besides that, so we like you know have a lot of white spots still around the globe. So um, I know I'm not supposed to stop on this because uh, it's like an extra subject. So, but I hope you know uh, the main things about GSM and CDMA. Okay, C CDMA was developed uh, initially so by, for military use, and that's why it's more secure and actually faster. So we uh, associate uh, with CDMA two and a half on three G. So with uh, GSM, it's uh, pretty much like so straight 2G, maybe 3G. So in, uh, I mean, with enhancement, yeah, it's a 3G, 3.5G too. So but uh, what we need to know, uh, so what is the main um, difference between two of them? So if you have GSM, then pretty much it will be some SIM card, uh, so SD card, in removable card in your phone, so then uh, when you go outside the country, you just can replace this card and still uh, have your phone and don't need to go through the expensive roaming so this, uh, services. Okay, so um, what are other things we should know just in general about network? So it's a Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi, this, you know, I, I like this picture. I think it's a very good representation of uh, so how the Wi-Fi work. So, you know, it's a, this technology use radio waves uh, to transmit data between your computer and routers. And routers could be everything, it's, a, it's why it's a wireless, because it's, a, <laughs> don't need any cable, duh. So, this, and you know, hotspot could be everything and, and everywhere. And our device itself, uh, our mobile device, uh, could be, uh, so it's some tethering point, uh, could be Wi-Fi hotspot as well.
So, and actually, this if you heard about Google Glass, so this right now technology, this with Google Glass, uh, I mean, you can also sign your Google Glass for very expensive um, data plan, like 40 bucks a month. So you just can use your device to tether into Google Glass. So then, boom, so you are uh, in good track. So you don't need to additional data plan So for your another variable uh, mobile device. So why I'm interchange the word mobile, mobile, you know what? So it's the same word. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's why I'm just, it intentionally do this in one word mobile, in one word mobile. So mobile was originally American transcription, So, but uh, from England and India, we have uh, mobile pronunciation. So now, because in Silicon Valley, most of the people so who is working in the mobile industry is somehow international, so then people used to use both pronunciation. So I hope that you will use to too. Um, so go to the next slide. Uh, just to talk a little bit about um, mobile network. So from one to four, why is this G, G, G? So G stayed for generation. So but every G, every generation, it's a like breakthrough technology. It's a, some new way of uh, transmit all these waves. Uh, so there's a new way to increase or secure, so there's a stab stabilize and accelerate uh, frequency and amplitude of the waves. So 1G uh, referred to analog signal and it was just used between two cellular towers. So 2G uh, was breakthrough because it was upgrade to digital. So then we can also, you know, this it starts get possible so to get some text messages across network. So 3G it was like completely new, new breakthrough things. So uh, because uh, at this point electromagnetic so wavelengths known as a spectrum was involved. So and uh, it was possible you know to create some 3G data card so or so it was like st starting era of iPhones and Blackberry it was like blue bloom era for iPhones. Actually, you know, this is an uh, interesting fact. So then, um, I'll talk this uh, AT&T tried to promote and so advertise then iPhone uh, 4S was already having this. So this uh, 4G technology as actually was marketing trick. So it still was uh, HDSPA, so this uh, this 3.5, so G. And finally, only iPhone 5, so uh, starting using LTE. So, 4G called ultra uh, broad, broadband uh, and it's based on all internet protocol uh, packet switcher instead of uh, circuit switcher technology. Again, some breakthroughs, you know, then we use now this FDE methods instead of spread uh, spectrum radio technology. So, and uh, believe it or not, uh, you think it's it? No, I mean, actually we really on uh, somewhere between the doors uh, for 5G and uh, I really highly believe so the next uh, step will be quantum uh, somehow broadband. So if uh, I just, you know, I, I'm news, I, I'm follow the news, I'm chasing the news all the time. So and um, I will show you this, not today, but so next time uh, I have a lot of some specific uh, YouTube secret uh, links where you can really so blow this, your knowledge of technology today and tomorrow. So, okay, anyway, two w weeks ago, then they finally represent first quantum computer, and it's for real. So, and what it does, you know, this quantum, it's like super nanoparticle small things. So, they not just go different direction, but they also go like a different dimension, so different layers. And it's just bring your speed, uh, bring your possibility what you can do with computer and, uh, I don't know, computer technology, absolutely to breakthrough level. So, and we will talk about this in the next uh, couple weeks. Uh, is it five uh, tablets? 5G? No, no, no. It's not the tablets. Uh, 5G is not exist yet. It's not official name. It's just my, um, I don't say in imaginations. This, I think it's my prediction. So I'm like, so here, um, <laughs> tell you about the feature. <laughs> so, okay. Um, one of the things is, you know, why I give you this slide. It's actually from my class, uh, which I teach in a class. So, but I would just want to get you, wake up your imaginary. So this, uh, what we do this, you know, for mobile testing. So. I told you one of the part of mobile testing, it's network stack protocols. So we have like two levels. We have system level of mobile testing and we have uh, so app level of mobile testing. So I work, so I'm not really network girl, so this, I work with software so on the application level. It's actually so 
I, I can say fun. So this, I mean, but uh, some people maybe think then. So it's much more fun to go to network. So anyway, this most of it automated because you really cannot simulate uh, so response and all this uh, receiving and uh, you know the how you dis in confirmation of how the network. Uh, waves and signal work because it's like again milliseconds nanoseconds so but um, if you go to any industry uh, so in the, you can read in descriptions you know some of this abbreviation then you can see on this uh, image so I mean everybody know HTTP is uh, CMTP but okay we go like uh, deeper in uh, IP IGMP so RP so all this abbreviation this will give you indications so then uh, during your interview you really need to heavily relate on uh, and prepare and find any possible information so how the network stack protocol working so what tools is it used like uh, TCP test for example so one of the multi-platform uh, so testing tools so and um, go from there so I will cover this little bit uh, not too much maybe like half hour or so out of ten so, but we will talk about this more later when we come to specific of mobile testing and where exactly so you you need a, and you expect so to have heavily a relationship with network stack protocols. So uh, the last things about networks, uh, it will be just a table for you for connectivity. Uh, just the data. All right. So what is the data for me? So why should I have and why should I really concentrate on this data? So. It's again, it's your imaginary, and if you're not really a technical person, but so this, uh, you can, if you get concept, so what is each technology related to, uh, for you as an end user, so then it will be easy for you to explain things. Also, during interviews, they, you know, they really give you like break, so because they understand all this nervousness and so many different uh, factor variables and condition, what happened during interview, so but, um, if you can give them example, so do you know anything about uh, 4G technology? Uh, technical wise, uh, just co concept, but I can give you example. Boom. So they give some example. So what is 4G to LTE technology for you? So right now, this is fastest uh, speed they reach so far. It's uh, 480 megabits per second. My goodness, what is 480 uh, megabits per second for you as for end user. So no think about a uh, regular song. Regular song it's about what uh, between uh, we can say 5 to 15 megabits. So how many songs in one second you actually can download to your uh, so mobile device. Wow yeah too many. So if we talk about some full size movie I don't know this uh, it's between two and a half and four gig. So how many seconds it will take you to download this movie to your mobile device? Some like maybe what, 10, 20 seconds? Absolutely amazing result, yeah? So and this technology is already available in the United States. It's what just like uh, blew your mind already. So, but it's just example. So that's how you can present stuff. So we're moving up to manufacturers like, oh my God, so who care about manufacture why we really need to think about manufacture too much so what is depends on, on maker or manufacturer or vendors it's another word for that in mobile testing so they determine uh, operating system and hardware and firmware so this for each device for in for our testing purposes so they determine mobile platforms mobile browsers and devices itself this where the technology go with these devices so and I will show you right now this it's not like uh, imaginary anymore it's not like some prototype ta da da so for example uh, everybody knows Samsung so they have breakthrough with Yum it's a new product so it's a flexible uh, fonts the first flexible font and you can bend any direction you want so make a circle of it if you want to so and they was presented an exhibition in San Francisco in January 2013 boom you think it will be wait for another five years before it's come in the market oh no so they everybody just plan to get some special so to the Christmas or in the first quarter of 2014 and it will be time when you exactly get your like uh, hands on and get your first job as a tester for three four months and ready to jump for something better in serious so it's what is the point is so uh, you know I don't know how it happened but people always messed up uh, carrier and provider and uh, with makers so when I ask you what phone you have what phone you ha have 
So this first word you need to support, I, I want to hear from you, not then it's AT&T or Verizon or Sprint, who cares? So I want to hear then what exactly your phone is. So who is the maker? So what is the name of your phone? What is your operating system of your phone? So what year of your phone? Things like that. And it's a crucial thing. It's a very important because based on this simple information, so I can tell you, do you really love uh, work with mobile phones? Do you really have a clue about your own phone or about mo mobile testing? And most common, so thinking question, so this, then people will not survive during interview. So just tell me about the devices you, so you was testing on. It's a very simple, they don't try to trick you. They not expect that you will lie. They just really want to know this what devices you was used. So I just have response from the girl she have interview with Google so last night and she sent that me email at eight thirty. The first question tell me about your project and what devices you was testing. This operating system exact operating system on it. So I, I, I'm very thankful her, for her because, again, so this, uh, she supports, so then what I'm saying to you, I, I'm not just blah, 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 so then it's come direct from the field. Actually, this, all this uh, question that we have and explanations so that we have through the, um, so all our lecture, uh, it's come straight from the field because um, Mike uh, Portnoff and his students, they have like long time agreement, so you know, just to reveal all these questions and tricks so when people go to interview. So, and they submit this question to us, then we can also find right answer and prepare people for interviewing for right question and right answers. I have secret file, yeah, <laughs> a lot of them. Okay, so devices, I mean, very simple stuff. So what is depends on mobile devices and, and mobile testing? Uh, first of all, it's a form factor. So what is a form factor? Is anybody can, can tell me what is a form factor is? Anybody know? No, no? Anybody? Oh, like no, not forever. I don't know. All right, cool. So it's what it actually, guys, really is. So we're talking about, so everybody can remember maybe some uh, feature phone as a candy bar. So right now, this we're in the era of touch screen. So this uh, form factor, but think about taco, uh, you know, from your game console, uh, for example, Wii U. Bomb. It's a mobile device as well, believe it or not. All this game console, or we have some special swirl. So this, all this configuration, physical configuration of devices, it's a form factor. So, and, uh, you know, depends on this form factor, we also need to adjust our screen resolution and uh, so rotation of the screen uh, and all these small things and how we create apps and so how it will fit. So, and uh, under what consideration and so on. So, we also depends on the device we talk about again compatibility integration of hard and software so we're talking about a feature and option of each device UI so I know again classical word for UI it's a GUI but hey you know what when I first time come to work and uh, ask my manager some question regarding GUI he look at me very strange very long it's like what are you talking about it's like a uh, graphical user interface it's like Okay, I don't know where you come from, girl, but we say UI. So I, I learned this very quickly. So <laughs> um, from classical model of GUI, we go to UI. So, and we also generate our target and testing planning. Most of the time, it's not really us as a tester, so who will, so that's who will decide what uh, devices we will use for testing. So, and whether it's a marketing or sell because they make some special research so who will use our product potentially the guys with income blah 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 who potentially will have phones so and so so what is the top on the market so what is the you know this best feature so then could be uh, integrated with our application or software or so on I mean it's a lot of uh, different research factors so then I have no really clue and hands on as a tester so why they choose specific device this and this so uh, many times it depends on the client because client want and that's it client want only iPhone because they expect to get so fast return um, mon uh, some money return uh, from the product if they put this uh, an iStore alright fine so we test only on iPhones I mean we try to so how they consider like four eight devices pro project so because I, I can have one iPhone, but if I have three different versions of iPhone, believe it or not, so that we still can uh, create some, you know, this, uh, for example, 6.0, uh, 
I can uh, to take 6.10 and so this is the latest version that we have for iPhone right now 6.1.4 uh, boom so for iPhone 5 I can already have three version three devices so uh, next point type of mobile devices you think like okay what what mobile devices I know I know iPhone tablets uh, maybe some media player it's pretty much it. No, it's much more than that. So we have also digital camera considers these days. Think how many video bloggers so use the cameras and not really like video cameras. Video cameras as well is a mobile device, pager, personal navigation device, tablet, so this uh, mobile phone itself and wearable computing. It's a, like absolutely new area but uh, it's actually completely heat spot in Europe for the last three years but um, again we have some lobbyist uh, political marketing conspiracy in mon monopoly in the United States so and I will tell uh, told you about this later so this <laughs> so why and who did what <laughs> so but it's coming next year we have breakthrough hooray so but I just want to ask you about mobile computing so this what do you think mobile computers could be any clue I mean it's a word so but what give me any example if you ask, if I ask you, said so what mobile computers you know? Notebook. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Let's go to the next slide. So we have mobile web devices. Believe it or not, so that's for technical reason. We have digital personal assistant, the P PDA. So it was like pretty much a little bit on the side of old. Yeah, iPad. iPad is a tablet consider. So calculator. All these handheld game consoles like the Nintendo DS, whatever, Vita from Sony and things like that. Portable media pr player, any possible site. So this, if anybody here from Aui, no, this is a new game console, so from Los Angeles for $99. So, and we have also m uh, mobile collaboration. That's actually very cool. So this people use this for business lot because uh, it's a special device Then you know, this uh, kind of like projector. So. It's, we have some video conferencing possibility, but uh, during video conferencing, you can create and share some graphs or text document, and it, it's a cool. So then it's a kind of some pad, then you can also just make a sketch, right, so this uh, during uh, your conference. So again, I try to ex extend your horizon right now, so not scare you, but you have to get excited. Then So m mobile technology, it's just pretty much like 360 degree unlimited so everywhere you go it's something uh, mobile wireless there so we move to the main portion at the platform and operating system okay so why should we consider this for testing or really how heavily we relate on operating system and platform during mobile testing I First of all, this all our mobile features it depends on uh, platform and operating system. So second thing, then we talk about devices settings. So third one is just again form factor. So what kind of uh, mobile devices will be? Uh, and the last point, so this is why we consider depends on operating system or platform. So for example, like open or close. So you know this uh, we have some uh, source of this. Uh, platform or operating system it will be um, proprietary or something so then we can have some app store which will be open or, or so this we have uh, free apps there or we really need to concentrate so like uh, i store so then we need to we have special testing like certification compliance for uh, app store we have uh, certification compliance for license uh, software or we have certification compliance for license platforms such as uh, Gmi, so this uh, for Oracle, or we have uh, Brew MP, so f for HTC smartphone, things like that. Boom. So type of mobile pl mobile platforms. Uh, I already mentioned. So we pretty much have three main uh, types. So license proprietary and open source and here's some example and it's funny things you know this like uh, some of this change in names and uh, some of this familiar so BB was at, at some point it was Blackberry Rim so they rebrand themselves so in January 2013 so now they call themselves BB10 so they get rid of this uh, so research and emotion 
Uh, iOS, some people, you know, disagree with iOS name. It's a long story that's how many times they change their names. So, but iOS, it's actually like two components. It's uh, OSX from uh, Mac, from Macintosh, plus Darwin, Darwin Foundation, and the Unix kernel, so which is a part of uh, iOS operating system. So, uh, I hope everybody know Android. Um, not too many people maybe know that Linux is a standalone operating system. It's actually very popular in Asia, specifically China. So we have like a new breakthrough with Firefox operation system. It's not in the United States yet. It's some kind, we can say, trial. So for five countries in uh, Spain, Polish, sorry, Poland, um, Brazil, Argentina, and Venezuela. So. You know, I think it's a conspiracy go there, so because it's a lot of big bosses involved, so you know, like big company involved, so it's in a lot of money invested in all this project, and um, somehow, uh, you know, some of this major provider and maker who was think in 2008 when Apple have breaks uh, through so this uh, open SDK and um, distribution so this, uh, of SDK to third party so uh, they're now ready for revenge I mean it's my thinking of, of it and I, I, we will see what happens next year so but Firefox is very promising it's the first operating system uh, what don't really have like operating system base and hardware it goes straight everything from web and it's a, like breakthrough technology so, and Webus, I mean, one time, so I think half of you at least can remember Palm, Webus, uh, so Palm OS, uh, you know, they don't have a good time. So, in uh, the last, so they was uh, sold, so through the HP, uh, so this uh, Helvet Pocket have them for like over a year. So, in, um, in January again, 2013, they were sold for to LG, so, and they tried to use this uh, Webus, um, so for the new internet TV project and actually it was actually a good story because one time it was proprietary system when it was under HP so now because it's turned to LG so it's become open source so I I know this you know it's like everybody knows this word but um, still struggling so this uh, to explain so what is the difference between license and the proprietary system I mean, sound to me like the same. So, but in general, license was created, you know, this uh, to solve this uh, so this uh, platform for device make in, uh, makers, so for non-exclusive distribution on devices, and it was just like a big thought to create some standard so for API development. I mean, it never happened. Ha ha ha. So with open source, uh, nice try to make some standards. So, but. Um, uh, it's still on the market. So GME was uh, first created by Sun Microsystem. Now it's under Oracle. Or oh, I give you this example of this uh, BrewMP. Beside HTC smartphones, it's very popular still. Uh, so to create some firmware for AT&T and Verizon. So, uh, for example, if you open your phone, then you will see some of icons always related to the f phone. Uh, so provider, carrier. And all this, it is like standalone native application that uh, create using special platform, you know. So they try to keep at least something, a uh, piece of, uh, you know, former monopoly than they have. It was just agreements of, for what, six, seven years ago. So what is pla proprietary platform? An easy explanation, it's everything under roof. Uh, under one roof. So this is the best example. It is still Apple who create the devices and create software. Uh, everything is uh, original brand, special name of Apple. So and please do not confuse proprietary operating system with uh, proprietary appli application or software. So because proprietary application uh, cre creates uh, when we have uh, some insufficiency. So this, uh, when company cannot find really some, you know, uh, right application or right software uh, for specific purpose. So maybe not right price or configuration. So pretty much it's internal software that created for internal as more likely like helping tools or part of development of something bigger. 
So in the open source, again, people uh, hear left and right, open source this, open, open source that, but what does exactly mean? Uh, it's not mean then, I mean, yes, it's mean then, so pretty much everybody, at least with some knowledge at some point, so can go and uh, download, alter, and edit uh, some, create some uh, own product, specifically on Android, and now this, this new uh, SDK breakthrough, so then, they just revealed a couple weeks ago, so during the uh, keynotes meeting, so then uh, boom, now this we really don't need to rely on Eclipse and Android SDK with ADT anymore, so because it's now implemented right, so under your development options, so on each Android device, so you can start create uh, your own programs, so and don't need to have your standalone PC, boom, you just have your device and go ahead, if you have some knowledge how to do this. I mean, at some point we all become this knowledge. So, mobile doing computer capable work. Okay, I don't get this one. All right. Uh, so, what I need to tell you about open source platform. They, you know, it's a community. We can say this uh, crowd of people. So, who decide to, you know, the, and assign marriage contract with some uh, principle. It's not really related to any money wise. It's related to some philosophy this, and you know this and follow the rules of community. So and the rules of community is very s simple. So then as a peer, so as a community or special club member we can say, so this I can, you know this, we can barter in inside or collaborate so with our end product and share a source materials and blueprints and documentation. So and you know and it's available all in exchange, so this uh, is no cost for the public. So and it was great idea. So and it's why it is so was viral spread uh, around the earth, and why it's open source is right now number one. So this we know this Google is number one so platform and uh, uh, operating systems around the world. So plus marketing. All right. So here this. Um, just consolidate information, then we talk about uh, so the last 15 minutes, uh, then it's a shortcut for you. Uh, again, during interview, you know, this, uh, they will ask you, again, it's a general statement. Actually, you, will, you don't want them to ask you this question. So I always encourage people to prepare a story about uh, your profession, about your last project or what you was doing as a QA. So, and create a story, then you cover all this. So this, all this platform, operating system, devices, so this gives them the stories. Is this, uh, story will be cut maybe after one minute of your talk. So, but they, you will escape like five other questions that you may not know answer. So just because uh, you have some smooth, you know, enthusiastic talks like man, so my favorite platform was this one, it was very excited project and things like that. So, um, one of the most things that we need to cover, um, you know, and I have this for iPhone as well, but we will skip it iPhone because you can review this later in this presentation. So, but when it's a very common thing, then during interviews I ask, so describe Android operating system or describe uh, uh, iOS uh, just or some you know what, what you can tell me about Apple platform or what you know about BlackBerry. So when they ask a question, the more likely they ask about platform operating system. So and uh, you know I really highly encourage you to create some template path of the story. So for you then you always can just you know just one two three four just go this list through and uh, objective of uh, list of objectives. So and tell them story. So for example. Android, source, so what is a source? Open, platform, what is the kernel of uh, Android? It's a Linux, so core language. Anybody who knows what is Android core language? Hands, please, please give me hands. Come on, guys, you're just like Sleeping Beauty. Nobody talk to me, what the heck? So, um, what is specific? I, I just wait for replay for core language, but um, if we talk about, oh, somebody, bloop. So what was it? New term for me. Huh, new term for me what? So core language? Core prog programming language is a new term? Oh, you really need to go to mobile terminology and basic. So then, yeah. So, but anyway, this to not spend too much time on it, I don't hear those a lot. Okay, so, but, um, okay, 
if you you know this you will it's indicated to me then you don't work too much with uh, <laughs> um, really like systemware or softwares because uh, core language core libraries it's uh, one of the main layers uh, pretty much in, absolutely right so Java is a core language for Android so because uh, if we let me show you this this my special creation so for architecture of Android. So all this in blue is operating system. So and what is the three distinguished feature of Android operating system? We have Linux kernel, we have libraries in Android runtime. So in libraries again, core Java, Java libraries. So and Delphic virtual machine. It's a three main distinguished feature of uh, so this Android because okay, library everybody have library. It's not just specific for Android. So you you know, core libraries, uh, media libraries, uh, I mean, it's a bunch of libraries, so this everybody does, so everybody have. So, but what is it special about um, architecture of Android? Why and who cares about Delvic virtual machine? So it's, it was actually a mar marketing trick and a very funny story, so I hope this it will be short this time. So then um, Java, core language. Java originally belongs to Sun Microsystems slash Oracle, so and it was licensed platform. Then license mean that it's required fee services, uh, maintains uh, from the original source, and so this uh, compliance visit and get some certificate like annual certificate, and get it its cost fee. So. Can you believe then, you know, if Google will hook up with uh, Java originally and do all this, uh, so based on Java platform, so this uh, using, uh, you know, license platform with Java language like this, so they will like completely be bankrupt maybe, so, you know, or guys could change the prices every year or maybe half year. So then um, marketing decide to do some uh, creation of Dell virtual machine to run through so this clone of uh, Java language, so then it's become original uh, OHA Google slash Android product, boom. So nobody pay fee, nobody care about license, it's their original things. I mean, uh, through the what, last five years, so, so since, yeah, since 2008, they may be modified like 10% of some, uh, make some whatever, 10% uh, modification of this Java clone language, but still, uh, it's still Java. So, but again, come back to original where we start. Oops, we're not. Come back. All right, we proceed right here. We were talking about core language. You guys better know what it is. Um, we talk, cover operating system. Uh, we just, I, I just tell you what is the three distinguished feature of this. So now, super crucial version history. I mean, it could be fun, so I really highly recommend to everybody, you know, just print this, uh, so cut the top and the bottom, put this in your bathroom, and every morning look at this and learn what, so this uh, version of Android, you know, nickname, so this uh, number-wise, because it will cost the interview. Three of my friends, my goodness, they was completely technically fit, they know everything, maybe not too much knowledge uh, So in uh, mobile itself, but really good QA, so really good potential to, you know, to go to mobile. So, and uh, she talked like, you know, about her project in 2011, and talk about, so then it was, you know, just uh, something jelly bean, it's like, oh, really? Okay, how many kids you have? Oh, so you come from Belarus, oh, I'm Wow, this it's really good weather right now. I mean, interview was just done, so this in one minute. So again, this simple question then they ask you, or you just need to like put in uh, when you talk your story. This uh, so what uh, was your last project of so how you doing as QA? So this what devices you was using for testing? What uh, your favorite device to use for testing and things like that? So it's always come to Android and boom, they ask you immediately. So what operating system so your device is or was? And uh, go to feel this, you know, if you just uh, I mean, if you talk about 2010. And you understand, then possibly it could be a, a Claire Froyo, so maybe Gingerbread for the end of so 2010. So you must be very careful. And another thing, so what is the most common version of Android still? Believe it or not, it's a Gingerbread. So we're not, uh, you know, because 
Android is spread around the world. So this infrastructure is still different around the world. And most common, 36%, is still gingerbread. So that's um, jelly beans is the 33%. Um, ice cream sandwich was not really successful. Nobody liked it, so it was like 15%. Honeycomb uh, was uh, originally developed so for tablets, and it's right now like 0.3%. And I take this data from... Um, 2013 June 6 so this um, if you go to just Android history so they update this like uh, once a month so okay it's a cruel point and you need to know another point you know this breakthrough for many maybe I'm maybe not maybe you already fit and know this very well uh, so what is Android Android browsers you know I mean it could be a straight question like what Android browser you know, but it could be like, hey, so this, uh, what browser you use for testing? And again, it was a point uh, which was uh, destroyed one of my interviews of friends uh, because, uh, again, everything was completely good and prepared, but uh, for some reason he was not aware of, so the, because he was working with, net, with native application mainly when browser is not important. So and when they asked this question, so he told them, and it was February 2012, and he was told like, oh, um, based on his resume, this his history working with mobile devices. So and um, they was asking him like, okay, so what is your favorite? Um, browser was at this time so when you're doing this project and she's like oh it was Chrome yeah I like Chrome it's like oh Chrome mm -hmm. so because Chrome just came in June 2012 and his resume was based on February 2012 boom something is not clicking bye thank you we will call you never happened so you must be careful with that but the things you should know um, we do have default browser for Android and it's a web, web Android and the same time the trick is then because of diversity uh, of makers of providers and because of uh, customized things uh, for each Android user provider or vendor can change default browser and actually this like change for good so they can make create a list of browsers and uh, keep uh, web android as a browser there or maybe default browser or you just completely can uninstall this from your device and use what is your preference i highly recommend you right now like today so just to go to in uh, your store so if you have android or iphone and download at least another two three browsers and start so you know just push a button around so for the next five weeks so then you get familiar so then you can talk about this because uh, it's a very common question believe it so I mean my favorite is a dolphin so because it was first uh, innovative uh, browser with uh, gestures so when you just like so sign F on your screen boom so you're already in Facebook so me too oh cool so then we're on the same page but some people from rural area will completely so they they first choice will be Opera Mini so because uh, it's a kind of compressed file and give you you know just uh, so very um, I cannot say it's a shortcut it's not a shortcut it's a compressed version of any web file so then it's go faster and it's uh, you know don't eat so much of your data so if you have low data plan or you don't have good so infrastructure then it will be perfect solution so Opera Mini is the one I mean so this I highly recommend you guys explore and download because we also will use for practical exercise and it's for your gain. I have at least five browsers and I use it uh, so for different purposes when I stay longer for search or I just need shortcut very quick to open and see something so I use different browsers. So and come back to original path so when you out of uh, talk about version of browsers so you still can talk about updates and upgrades think about so what is uh, in your uh, mind so uh, is it easy or difficult to upgrade Android boom depends yeah so because uh, if it's some old version what this will it's a so painful process I throw away my Android and buy a new one really it was just a really long story I don't have time for this story but so if you a lucky one with 4.0 and up so then it's finally become photo photo is another professional word and you should know and I encourage you to start build your dictionary of professional words because you will use this in daily talk uh, with other professional in bug report in your test cases boom then you know this it's a boost up so respect uh, in um, your role as expert in company so photo is stand for firmware over the air 
So many times, instead of FOTA, they use the word OTA, so American Love abbreviation. So then uh, you can just uh, choose either one. Uh, so, but if you have got this feel some older so version of uh, so operating system 4.0 less, boom, then it's a really painful process. You need to spend hours before you can upgrade. So we talk about makers, it's over 80 makers for Android. Uh, from Kerios, uh, interesting numbers, so from 369 uh, official distributor in United States, so we have about 95% who work with uh, Android. Hey, where's another 5% go? Yeah, we still have Apple who distribute only Apple and we have another 12 regional carriers who distribute only Apple, that's why they signed merit contract with Apple. So it's uh, like barely this uh, five. Um, so Nokia nowadays is under Android, oh no. Okay, Nokia is uh, like octopus, you know, can you imagine? So, so they like everywhere, they try to get and catch piece of everything. So right now they pretty much um, like a divorce line with Windows Phone, and we will talk about the subject a little bit later. So, but um, they have agreement, so they involved in Tizen, which is a Linux-based foundation and some project. So they was, they try to be involved with any possible innovations going around. So because, so they have some part in Blackberry, they have some project going on, so partially with Android. And you know, what, what is the rumor or how you must understand so like what Nokia work now with Google oh no no but think I give you best, best example uh, with Blackberry uh, Blackberry use Android video player in their new devices in their new uh, BB10 line boom so somehow statistic wise world wise pretty much all new devices Blackberry devices considered to be Android as well so, and uh, it is the same things with Nokia. They try to implement and get an innovation of everything. To, so they have, a, you know, privilege to spend money how they want and sign contract and agreement with uh, many different, uh, in many dimension. So with many different company and makers or whatever, so with another makers as well. So on top of that. So live battery, it's a point when you don't have nothing to say and forgot everything, then you can brag about live battery. So this, uh, then it will be never be the best. Why? Because of fragmentation issue again. So every time you come to the point to talk about Android, you need to remind yourself. So then uh, it's a diversity of makers, diversity of devices. It's no regulation when what maker will make another next device. So they do in their own pace, whatever they want. So as they feel like. So, and it's why uh, many times, uh, so, <laughs> um, we will have compatibility integration uh, issue with soft and hardware. So, um, I think we're almost out of time and I'm like, oh, I'm freaking out. So, um, I wish I can talk about iOS, but use a the pass. It is the same pass that we just was going through to, uh, so with Android. And, uh, you know, this source is closed, platform is subject, uh, sorry, uh, Unix, core language is subjective C. So what is a special you need to know about operation system? So if we look operation system itself, uh, we actually work uh, most uh, with Cocoa Touch level. So it's a, a application framework level of operating system. So uh, some of you maybe if they have enough knowledge then they will go so to the media and core services work with API. But API is a straight gray box testing. It's not black box testing anymore. And again you see this somebody tell me I don't know this word core. Man you will have this word core everywhere. So core services, core operating system and things like that. And so and come back to original um, version history. I mean, it's a little bit better than uh, so this is Android. At least no nickname. At least we have photo update, and it was uh, since uh, 2011. This 5.0. It was through the so this uh, we have this photo update. So, but um, we still need to keep track. So this what was originally created. So, and it's one small confusion. If we talk about iOS 5, then it's related to the iPhone 4S. So it's not like, you know, consistent pattern because many people also messed up this. If we talk about iOS 6, which is a current operating system, but it's related to iPhone 5. So this is a new device which come in somewhere in September. So uh, iPhone 6 will be related. So this to uh, um, 
iOS 7. And actually, it uh, finally happened so this last Wednesday. So uh, I was like kind of skipping my work responsibilities because I want to see all this new feature. So, so then uh, they were showing. So are you guys okay? This because I still have like maybe 15 minutes to talk. Are you all right with that? Or is it too much? Or we just, we can stop <laughs> rapidly like, ah, oh, so I'm out of time. Bye. Or we can do it. We can do it. No problem. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So, so what, what is for me 15 minutes? I'm talk four hours straight in the class. <laughs> All right. So let's move. Let's move. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Um, so upgrade and updates. Again, because of proprietary system, use your logic. Also, if you have no clue, never have iPhone in your hands, just think logically. So if it's under one roof, so this uh, pretty much all engineers somehow work together. So it's one company, one policy, one standard insight, uh, whatever. So one uh, thinking and, you know, pr procedure things. So then, all right. So then um, pretty much um, everything is inside company internally. Uh, meet some standard uh, and uh, you see how we, this, we expect every year one new device. Actually in this year, it's, I mean it's one main device and it's always some device on the side like uh, last year it was iPhone 5 and iPod 5. This year we expect so iWatch and so this uh, iPhone uh, 6. So but namely this we have so like you know bunch of product in a so with some cycle so it's not uh, really uh, unexpected things come out of uh, Apple for example so uh, I mentioned that it's a one care maker it's uh, about all together 16 carriers so we've designed uh, AT&T and Verizon we have uh, Virgin Mobile for prepared iPhone and we have Cricket for prepared uh, phone plan and we also have this 12 regional carriers in 14 different you know, states so then uh, they only married to Apple product. So live battery, I mean just logical again thinking because uh, it's a very high integration of soft, soft and hardware so they do specific uh, heavily so this uh, compatibility testing so mobile testing for each device so live battery is actually going better and better and compare I mean I don't say then live battery for Android is completely bad, so but they will never get some or exceed some excellence uh, like so iPhone at this point. So uh, what you should know about browsers, let's skip it right here. Safari, Safari is default and always will be default, but it's the same way. That's because so this uh, we still currently I mean it's about twenty. So top 20 of uh, Android and top 20 of uh, iPhone browser, uh, all around the globe we have around 100 browsers, so then uh, more or less popular. So how we come to this vari variety of browsers, you will ask me, and uh, it's uh, it was a rhetorical question, don't worry. So, <laughs> so more likely this... Um, you need to start thinking category then somehow then they have some framework or something so it's called layout engines so, uh, then it's a, like plain template and use this template they start and build things uh, and customize and every time so they customize and they create uh, another version of something browser so and uh, when we come to this uh, thinking then it's exactly point uh, then we can skip to the next one application to framework so I mean, it's a completely blind spot. Everybody's lost. It's like, man, framework. You know what? It's take me, I, I kid you not, like six months before I really like, ah, oh, it's what it does. Man, it's so simple. You know, because I read so many definitions, so technical literature. It's like, my goodness, I'm lost. I have no idea. So what it is? Because every time when I think I know, so I turn around and go to the some uh, read other article, and it's uh, different things. It's like, man, how it could be? So, but generally, frameworks and libraries help to, so web developer focus on creating rather than figure out how the stuff whatever so must be put together or whatever. So this uh, made. And I have the best uh, so analogy this that I found so through this uh, times for the last year. So. If you start to think about framework like a Lego uh, pieces, then everything is situated and start to get in a place and very easily. So what is uh, your first association with Lego? It's a different shapes, could be some different uh, bumps, points, whatever, so different lengths. Uh, such an awesome info. All right, cool. So um, 
you can save it for later. <laughs> Let's finish it first, all right? So um, you have some, but it's a hard pieces. It's not like a soft whatever, you know, uh, GUI, so then you can modify these pieces. No. The main things you should understand about framework, when you do create a framework, doesn't matter, it could be easy frames, a heavy frame, so uh, almost like a hardware things, so it doesn't matter. But uh, you have a bunch of pieces which could be named libraries, packages, uh, strings, function, whatever. So, but for you, for you, imagine, so this, imagine then it's just different pieces of Lego, different colors, different lengths, but they all like a standards, hearts. So you can put them together, and from all these Lego pieces, you can create Lego City. It could be unlimited possibility what you can create, customize. But the piece itself, so this, you cannot really break and modify it or just, you know, change the shape of these uh, small bricks or whatever. So it's how you must think about framework. And if you think, then it's why we have so much variety, because we have some template, and it's a blend. And on this blank template, we can, whatever, make our configuration from all these different pieces. So it's all what fr framework does. How they do this? It's another question. And it's actually, uh, so this so another conceptual things Then you should understand and know. So this, because it's come to, what call API. I mean, okay, from technical definition, everybody know then it's application, program, and interface. And I mean, I know you can memorize then it's a set of function, classes, and libraries, blah, 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 blah. But what is the real, uh, so this, how it works? So why is API testing is so uh, important? And uh, really, how it works? So I changed like five slides. It was in the beginning, it was 10 slides. I tried to understand by myself until it's like, Duh, it's very easy explanation. I mean, sorry, I don't have interactive pods today, so but I will bring this, I hope, on Thursday. So then I can make a sketches when we talk. So I talk, we talk, ha, 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 it's a monologue. But anyway, so, but um, what I try to say, for example, imagine, so most popular still, uh, API, I give you example right here, so like Google Maps. So thousands of other application embedded or so this uh, use Google Maps so iPhone this, uh, was using the Google Maps I mean Apple was using Google Maps until iPhone 5 coming so I mean I give you many many examples so this okay we're stuck with Google Maps so what is Google Maps for you it's a, like a huge box which is like this big letter Google Maps and inside this box it's a bunch of different Lego pieces so different sizes, different lengths, unnormals, whatever pieces you want. So, and on the other side is my absolutely empty box, and it's like, oh, it's my creation then I, of, so of my whatever interactive map for my special customers somewhere in China, so, and I need to create some special customized map for them. So how I will do this? It's like, oh, I know that Google Maps is box right there. So let me send a message, and its API is pretty much, so it's what generally speaking, so application programming interface is specification of how software components should interact with each other. So I send that message to this Google Maps uh, box. So hey guys, can you give me one green plate with uh, six points? You know, I just want to build something for my maps. It's like, oh yeah, sure, take it. So they send it to you. Um, it's like immediately, it's like, hey guys, do you know some, I need some three pieces, uh, red bricks, uh, so two points? Okay? It's like, yeah, sure, get it. So piece by piece, small step by step, like, uh, you know, not just turn your head, but little bit, so move your head. So every time, messages occur. So, and uh, why this API mainly this call and the messages or calls? So this every time you need to do, to build something uh, custom, so you uh, send some message or call can I get piece, customized piece, uh, piece from your Lego box? Then I can create my own, cre so this uh, special things. So piece by piece, let's go back and forth. For example, you know, you send it some, uh, and it's go all in it XML, uh, so, or JSON, some, as they use uh, programming language. So it's not really heavily, you know, scientific language they use. So this like, and it's more likely, it's look most of the time like HTTP link. Link to this, link to that, link to this, link to that. So from some virtual uh, 
more likely we can use word cloud for this. So this uh, Google Maps huge box with these Lego pieces. I hope this you would track in my thinking. All right, guys, are you okay? So you, I'm not lost. <laughs> so, but piece by piece, standard messaging back and forth, we create some custom things built on Google Maps and it's how do you so this every of this message it's your API so this when you do go through the API testing is how you test the correctness of all these links and the response and the retrieval information so by using these correct links and in other things this if you send us something like hey I need this piece and they say like I don't have this piece like man can you just like create this piece for me so because it's like I need uh, red with 10 points. It's like, I don't have red with 10 points. I have like with 4 or 2. It's like, all right, so can you just put together like 4 and 4 and 2? Oh, all right, so this you created one long piece, red 10 points. Send it to me. So it's again, it's another uh, so responsibility, you know, to again uh, bring this information back and forth. And that's what API does. So I hope this will clarify this. And another term that you should know this says SDK. So it's many confusion come there. So, but I just leave you this information because we still need to cover two more levels. Oh my goodness! Ah, oh. so applications. Um, what you should know today about application? All right, any application then that run on hand device, which uh, device so that uh, connect to Wi-Fi. Oh, I mean, so internet, so and have standalone operation system could be considered mobile apps. So in the beginning, it was like email, calendar, or contact database. But now, I mean, everything possible that we have in our devices. So in the, these days, nowadays, around our devices. So then, it could be considered a so mobile mobile application. So, but what is specific of native uh, mobile application? Um, we have many times confusion. So one thing then you need to think immediately. Uh, when you get your device, you already have some application there. So preset of some uh, application. It's your native device. Uh, so sorry, not native application. Another part, you get a bunch of native application through the different app stores. So but what is distinguished feature? So every time then a company who creates so this application or a software product uh, need to use specific platform, specific operating system for specific device using specific language, everything spe specific, specific, specific. So then it's already con considered Consider native application. If it's go through for you from end user perspective through the app store, then every time as an end user you need to install it or give uh, so this give permission for updates. So then it's a native application. If it can go offline, it's a native application. So in a best example, I mean, in the beginning, the native apps, uh, so this was um, nearly all games was native apps. Again, these days, just, you know, if you get this question during interview, boom, just take your phone and look what you have. So what? Contact. I don't know. What I would I have? Any possible apps, so then you will have on uh, your phone. So email, so this could be this. Uh, right now, this we have link, uh, LinkedIn in, integrated. Facebook is now become native. So and we have also like another things to think about media. So media player is a native application. So this, uh, if you have media player as so an iPhone, boom, it's it's a native application. So we have some small cheap. Uh, it's called accelerometer, which is responsible uh, for every time you rotate your device landscape and portrait, boom. It's a native application. Why? Because tiny, tiny chip somewhere in a motherboard, so this uh, an, um, device is responsible so for perfect integration and communication with other mobile applications so through the accelerometer. So a uh, GPS, it's like, man, many times, really, it was a mystery for me. Why is GPS native application? Boom! Until I found some picture, and it was a perfect picture. So this, believe it or not, we have like also microchip GPS and a, a motherboard so of each device. And it's why this way under Big Brother long time. So because also if your device kind of off, so you still can so retrieve a GPS point of your device. Haha, -ha, it's how all this last device services is working. So um, now Web mobile application, it's another point. Uh, it also could be called like browser application. So it's internet enabled. So every time uh, you initiate like session, it must be online. 
So every time you initiate session, uh, so with internet, so then every time this uh, your application, uh, or at least part of your application, will stream and run so this uh, on your device over and over, start start over again. Um, so many times you know this, it's a cost efficient, it don't take too much time and money and it could be buggy as hell because, so who cares because uh, I can distribute this to you and you know I can repair and put some patches or make a new deployment every half hour if I want to. So and enhance uh, to, to see how it's work, for whom it's work. So it's why uh, most of uh, web mobile applications, they also have extension with statistics so to track. So what is attractive to people, how is it uh, useful? Uh, so for people and it's it's a uh, when we start and create the product it's how it's pretty much like a pilot to see is it worth it or not to develop more to spend more time and money for that so the main things you need to remember from all my fast talking right now <laughs> So when, because it's a very common question, comparison of netting versus web application, I got this question during my last interview when I got my job and it was only two questions that they asked me. So, but what you need to remember for sure, then native versus web differ not so just uh, in how they made, but so how they access. So web application is uh, mainly this, uh, these days built uh, using HTML5, CSS, and JavaScript technology. So, and it's amazing because you build this one and distribute for many. It was a key so to solve some uh, fragmentation problem that we have specifically with Android devices. So, and native applications, as I told you, this uh, they use uh, so they create pre this preferring technology. So in how they access, uh, one thing you just uh, open your browsers, boom, you're already there. So other things, then you go through the app store and install and update this, uh, so apps time to time at least, if not automatically. So hybrid, oops, I'm out of scope, my goodness. All right, web plus native, it's not a love, it's a hybrid. So and uh, I like this picture because um, here we have a big box big portion of it is still web application, uh, so, so uh, sorry, web mobile, and we have native portion of app. Between they communicate through the API, you remember this call messaging things? So, and native portion through the API as well, communicate with operating system, with device, and with all this integrated, so this application and services of this, of device. It's why this web mobile was always struggle, for example, if you just open some browser and Sometimes it's slow. Sometimes when you try to rotate and it's uh, not going well, or it's all this usability and uh, UI issue always bugging people, so not aligned uh, truncation and things. So, uh, if why it's a show and then it's not good integration with native apps, specifically with uh, with accelerometer. If you have hybrid application, you barely will see this problem. And this nowadays, it's uh, pretty much uh, you will not. Um, really just as a user, you know, also as, as a black box tester, you will not see the difference between native and hybrid application until you come to gray box level, until to this API transmission calls messages, so because on a technical level at this point, so you will see the, so the difference. But we still black box testing class, kind of, so let's move on. Um, where are we now? Hey. So what I should cover? Oh yeah. So this, um, you know, again, uh, during interviews, they will ask you if you cannot explain how it's work or what it does, or you don't remember definition. So at least you're supposed to give me some example. So why I also put bunch of special frameworks? Uh, so this uh, here, some names. So because names, it's a key. You know, this when you look for job, look for requirements of the job. Boom! If you see one of these names, it's mean then somehow they product the company related to hybrid application it's mean for you logically then you need to read right before interview everything possible so related to hybrid application and get aware of how it's work and uh, read about so some cloud computing things and things like that so it's it's your prediction and it will work hundred percent so and um, here's a couple slide 
again, things you should know, and I create for you extensively, not just and you hang yourself, but so print it out, put this on your wall everywhere, this, you know, and uh, this uh, couple weeks, uh, this months, so you will remember. Extension, you know, it was so funny because I have very good guy. I don't know what was a blackout in his mind. You know, he comes like, man, they dumb. They just ask me some extension, extension, hook. I don't know any extension. What they want from me? It's like, dude, I don't know what you think about extension. Maybe it's like 291 on one or something extension. So 211 to this uh, please in the office, call Mary. No, no, no. It's just extension of different files. So this for Android, it's a dot apk so for single one and dex uh, if we're talking about a, a compressed file so for iphone it will be ipa and zip so and uh, we have bunch of file so you know what happened this uh, okay you come to any company uh, depends you always kind of prepare for interview i hope so this you understand and company work with like internet radio boom 100% they will ask you for all possible network protocols, blah, 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 and they will ask you what audio format you was used before. So what they ask, you know, or what audio extension you used before. I mean, you don't need to know all of them, but from each of the slides that I create for you, at least like two, and again, nobody asks you too much, like, you know, this, uh, give me some story about. They just want to know, like, MP3, MP4, so this uh, MID, fine. It said so they satisfied this answer. So they will not more likely ask you what does this mean because I mean if they ask this question then they're supposed to know what this means. It will be embarrassed for them to ask this question, okay? So but uh, the same things with video files or image uh, or game or executable file and so format file so this I create this for you shortcuts then you have this all in one place so and you will go to this through the print presentation so hooray we have last five minutes services and it's also part of ecosystem uh, and very important part of ecosystem uh, what is this Believe it or not, it's what we talk about, cloud. So, yeah, cloud is marketing work, but uh, generally speaking, it's a just client-server relationship. But if you will, uh, how you can sell this stuff, client-server, so it's like sound boring or like too technical, uh, people don't buy it. So cloud, it's cool. It's uh, some imaginary things. But in reality, it's look like this. And actually, they make create some good picture of it so with some uh, painful color so in reality the bunch of servers staying somewhere so in uh, create again in the beginning so if I ask you what is a cloud and you will tell me it's a storage please don't do that so because maybe in some way in the beginning it was backup and storage right now so if somebody ask you what is a cloud you say this it's a service it's a huge area this uh, this could be everything so this you can do whatever you want and databases is one small part of it so and when we talk about mobile services it's a beautiful uh, visualization of what is uh, actually mobile services could be authentication so notification logging your favorite one haha <laughs> diagnostics so, and analytics data so scale it's for performance so server logic so that's uh, like you know more to hardware so this uh, core OS uh, related but it's a it's a much more we talk about monetization so this uh, um, these days it's uh, like um, we I don't know very much I, I, I think in the future of mobile devices uh, so go this direction then in 10 years so we will pay with uh, our phones for everything so it's actually good so because I'm always bad with my wallet and apartment I'm afraid to lose it so location based services it start as a maps and navigation so this GPS it's the best example so this navigation device but after that it's a spread around and now these days we have tracking services information services application and it's all related to location based services Whew. I'm sorry to talking so fast, so to cover so fast and too much in the first time. But you know this, I try to go through this conceptual stuff, and you will have uh, at least uh, so today and tomorrow to go to this uh, maybe slow one more time. So because uh, first we will move on, and uh, let's see what is our agenda on Tuesday. Oh, sorry, first day. So first day. We will consider, oh, it's my favorite one. So, because I really love this one, this uh, how well you know your devices. So, homework, besides, you know, this, it's like requirements. So, this every time, this uh, 
lecture is done, you go through the lecture again. If you have a question, please ask me this question. So, so I can type you my IVAD. Oops, da. Why is I'm typing? Give me a sec. IVA dos at portnov dot com. So it's so right now I'm under Michael name, but anyway. So the, why am I encouraged? Why I'm like um, I don't know <laughs> push you to ask me a question, guys. Real situation: you come to work; it's your first week. Uh, you don't want them, you know people label. Uh, stereotype uh, so other people all the time so if you knew uh, to the company to the product whatever to environment and you don't ask question so they have two stereotype on you and whether you're completely dumb and you're afraid and you just don't know what you're doing or you're completely arrogant person who is like know everything and don't need any help so both is a bad impression so it's why this you have no escape you must ask question I mean not every five minutes but this will bad so uh, when you come to work at least first week or first month when you consider newbies so this you should ask question maybe submit this in some written form or make some notes and uh, uh, talk about this every day with manager with your body with your whatever senior so with your other colleagues so but uh, I mean if you don't ask question then something wrong with you so it's why I try to put this in your head implement this in your head ask so the start ask question you have perfect five weeks time to ask me question and I will try to help you so and uh, today I also tried it is the last uh, things in uh, last thinking about homework uh, you have tomorrow so try to go to any of your app store whatever so you have blackberry some uh, so this android or iphone uh, yeah overwhelming hey you know what I was slow today and it's not just because of me I'm not crazy so but when again think about use your brain use your logic so this yeah if you would work for waterfall then you have one year to develop a product yes you have one week for documentation oops two days it test fell fine we have tomorrow one day but if you have only two four weeks to create a product which is supposed to be marketable which is supposed to bring and you know this eclipse to install okay um I will give you a clue of that. Don't worry about. It. So we will talk about this a little bit later. It's a, uh, you know, you, <laughs> you jumping. So wait, wait about the clips now. So, but uh, let me finish. Oh my gosh, I lost my thought. Anyway, so if you have two four weeks to complete full product, so if you have very intense testing, and you know what, nobody can wait for you when you finally get it and understand. So if somebody give you instruction one time, they understand and assume and they think, then you get it. So if you don't ask question, then it means then you get it. So because if you don't get it, you will ask question. So and if they give you some link where to go, it's mean then so they don't need to remind you and send it you thousand messages. It's mean then you go and look at this link or whatever the documentation or device. They give you only one time clue, and it's what I try to uh, kind of press you today. So then in five weeks you get used to to this pressure. When you come to your first work, it's like, hey, piece of cake. I really like this environment. It's a cool. Because between the meantime, so we also have uh, you know ping pong table, ice hockey, and we play a lot and we laugh and we also have sometimes long lunch. So and things like that. It's not like we're completely crazy scientists who work, you know, like eight hours without to move around. No, we like to move around. So and it's why like, make it fun, but we fast catcher, and I really love to see you in five weeks as a fast catcher. It's why I'm here today. Okay, install it. Okay, we'll see. So thank you so much. Let me call Michael, and he will give you another organizational clue where the links and everything is. So and I will meet you guys on Thursday, and I apologize, and it takes so long. So for first time.